What if you were told that the words you use every day could be causing harm to someone else? That's right, we're diving into the deep waters of political correctness. This isn't just another buzzword, it's a topic that's become increasingly relevant in the world we live in today. Imagine a web, intricately woven with threads of daily interactions, personal relationships, and public discourse. Each thread is impacted by political correctness or the lack thereof. It's in the way we communicate at our workplaces, how we interact with our friends, and how we express ourselves on social media. It's in the words we choose, the jokes we make, and the ideas we share. What we need to ask ourselves is, are we using this web to build bridges or to create barriers? Is our language fostering understanding or perpetuating stereotypes? So, is political correctness a necessary social etiquette or a threat to freedom of speech? For many, political correctness serves as a tool for social harmony. It's like a social pact, a commitment we make to one another to foster a more inclusive and understanding community. This is not just about avoiding offensive language, it's about cultivating respect among diverse groups and creating a space where everyone feels seen, heard, and valued. Consider the workplace, for instance. Political correctness encourages an environment where people of all backgrounds can coexist, collaborate, and thrive. It discourages discriminatory language and behavior, fostering a culture of respect that transcends racial, gender, and cultural differences. This isn't about stifling conversation, but rather about ensuring everyone feels safe and respected in their professional life. Now let's look at the media. The way we represent people and cultures in the media has a profound impact on societal perception and attitudes. Political correctness pushes us towards more accurate and respectful portrayals, challenging stereotypes and promoting a more nuanced understanding of diversity. For example, the shift from caricatured portrayals of minority groups to more authentic and complex characters is a testament to the positive influence of political correctness. And what about our daily interactions? The language we use influences our thinking and our understanding of the world. By consciously choosing more inclusive language, we can challenge our biases and broaden our perspectives. This is not about policing every word and thought, but rather about becoming aware of the potential impact of our words. It's about choosing empathy over indifference, understanding over intolerance. Of course, like any tool, the effectiveness of political correctness depends on how it's used. It's not a cure-all, but rather, a step towards creating a society where respect, inclusivity, and understanding are the norm rather than the exception. Clearly, there are those who see political correctness as a powerful tool for promoting a more inclusive and respectful society. But not everyone agrees. There are those who see political correctness as a threat to free speech. In this camp, critics argue that political correctness stifles the unfettered exchange of ideas and opinions. They believe it fosters a society where individuals are hesitant to voice their thoughts, fearing backlash or ostracization. This phenomenon, known as self-censorship, can lead to a lack of diversity in thought and a stifling of intellectual growth. Take for example the sphere of academia, traditionally a bastion of free thought and debate. Critics argue that an overzealous application of political correctness can lead to the avoidance of important, albeit uncomfortable, discussions. Courses may be altered, books may be banned, and certain topics may be deemed off-limits, all in the name of avoiding potential offense. Furthermore, some argue that political correctness creates a culture of fear and offense. They contend that individuals are becoming excessively sensitive, quick to take umbrage at the slightest perceived slight. This heightened sensitivity, they argue, can lead to a chilling effect on free speech, as people become increasingly wary of saying something that could potentially be construed as offensive. Consider the world of comedy, a realm traditionally known for pushing boundaries and challenging societal norms. Comedians often find themselves walking a tightrope, balancing the desire to provoke thought and laughter with the fear of crossing an ever-shifting line of what is considered acceptable. Critics warn of a society where individuals are judged not by the content of their character, but by their adherence to an ever-evolving set of societal norms. They fear a world where language is policed and individuals are penalized for not keeping up with the latest terminologies. From this perspective, it seems that political correctness could be impeding open dialogue and free expression. The question remains, however, is there a way to balance sensitivity and respect with the preservation of free speech? We'll explore this in the next segment. So, is there a middle ground in this debate? This is the question that we find ourselves asking as we navigate the complex landscape of political correctness. 
As with most things in life, extremes can often lead to imbalance and discord. So, it's worth exploring if there is indeed a space between absolute political correctness and unhindered freedom of speech. Imagine a seesaw. On one end, we have respect for others, which includes using language that acknowledges and honors diversity. On the other end, we have freedom of speech, the democratic right to express oneself without fear of censorship or restraint. Now, the trick is to find a position where the seesaw remains balanced, where neither side outweighs the other. But how does one achieve this equilibrium? The answer could lie in understanding the importance of context, intent, and mutual comprehension in communication. Context is key in deciphering the appropriateness of language used. A joke shared among friends may not be suitable for a professional setting. Intent, too, plays a crucial role. Words spoken in jest or irony may not carry the same weight as those spoken in malice or ignorance. Then we have mutual understanding. This is the agreement, or at least the attempt to understand, the perspectives and feelings of others. It means acknowledging that our words can have impacts beyond our comprehension and being open to learning and adjusting our language accordingly. In this middle ground, we don't aim to police every word or stifle healthy debates. Rather, we strive for a world where people feel respected and free to express their opinions without fear of causing unintentional harm. It's about fostering a culture of empathy, where we use our freedom of speech responsibly, with an awareness of its potential impact on others. Navigating this middle ground is not about walking on eggshells. It's about walking with awareness, with a willingness to learn and adapt, with respect for diversity, and with a commitment to maintaining the freedom of expression that is so vital to a healthy democracy. Perhaps the answer lies not in choosing a side, but in finding a balance that respects diversity and freedom of expression. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned today. We've delved into the complex issue of political correctness, and it's clear that it's not a black and white matter. On one hand, we have the advocates for political correctness, who argue that it's a necessary tool to ensure respect and dignity for all, especially those who have been historically marginalized. They believe that the language we use has the power to shape our reality, and by being mindful of our words, we can create a more inclusive society. They argue that political correctness is not about stifling free speech, but about promoting empathy and understanding. On the other hand, we have those who argue against political correctness. Their perspective is that it can limit freedom of speech and stifle creativity and original thought. They worry that the fear of offending someone can lead to self-censorship, stifling the free exchange of ideas that is so vital in a democratic society. But as with most things in life, it's not a matter of choosing one side over the other. There's a potential middle ground to be found. This middle ground acknowledges the importance of respectful discourse, but also recognizes the need for freedom of expression. It's about finding a balance between being considerate of others without compromising the diversity of thought and opinion that makes our society vibrant and dynamic. It's not an easy balance to strike, and it's something that we as a society will likely continue to grapple with. But the important thing is that we keep the conversation going. We continue to question, to debate, and to listen to one another. At the end of the day, it's about understanding and respect. And that, dear viewers, is something we can all agree on. So, where do you stand on political correctness? As we close this discussion, it's essential to reflect on your own perspectives. This isn't a matter of picking a side, rather it's about understanding the nuances and appreciating the diversity of thought. Ask yourself, how do your views shape your interactions? How do they influence your interpretation of the world and the people in it? And remember, it's not just about you, it's about the collective us, the society we are part of. Engaging in respectful dialogue with others is not just courteous, it's a necessity. It's through these conversations that we broaden our horizons, challenge our biases, and foster empathy. Our words carry weight, they have the power to heal or to harm, to unite or to divide. As we navigate these complex issues, let's remember the importance of understanding and respect in all our communications. Remember, the power of our words can build bridges or walls, choose them wisely.